Now there are a number of top 13 families. You've got Astor, Bundy, Collins, DuPont, Freeman, Kennedy, Lee, Onassis. Now Reynolds is not one of the top 13, but it's close up there. Rockefeller, Rothschild, Russell, and then you've got your 13th Illuminati bloodline, which is the Merovingian bloodline, which believes that they are descendants of Christ and descendants of Lucifer in the house of David. And uh, you've got the Van Dyne family. So these are your top Illuminati families. Now our prominent bloodlines of the mystery religions, they keep their power and wealth by dynastic intermarriage. They maintain as low of a profile as possible and they use fronts for legitimacy. Here are some of uh, the information on the Collins. The Rothschild family, for instance, have their own secret genealogies which go clear back to Nimrod. Now who is Nimrod? Nimrod was a great warrior and remember we talked about the power of Gnostic religions and he realized as a warrior that he could take the power of the state and combine it with the power of Gnostic religion. And you see an example of that Babylonian system during the Middle Ages where the Catholic Church was married to the state. If we look at this diagram, we will see the basic structure of the secret Illuminati. Back in 1776, they structured the Illuminati with, the, with 13 positions, but around the time of the American Civil War, they restructured it somewhat so that what they created was this first level, your anarchy level here, and then a hierarchy level, and then your special committees and councils. <coughs> this is very similar to <coughs> this is, excuse me. This is very similar to what we saw on our diagram where you had your uh, remember on your Gnostic religions where you had your broad mass religions in your initiate group. On the anarchy level, you'll find thousands of different witchcraft groups that each have their own rituals and their own beliefs, and they look disassociated and unorganized uh, and unrelated. But then, if you are selected to go beyond that, you will enter the hierarchy level, and as a little girl, for instance, you would be part of Sisters of Light, and then as a teenager, you'd be inducted into the Mothers of Darkness, and then you would progress to the grandmother level, and they have many special commit <coughs> committees and councils. For instance, your council of three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, your Grand Druid Council, your committee of three hundred, your committee of five hundred, over here, you see represented again that same pa three-tiered pattern that I was talking about. And this is the Satanic Brotherhood, uh, which is organized in hubs. The Satanic Brotherhood and the Illuminati are like this. They're essentially one organization, <coughs> except the Illuminati is technically Gnostic dualism. They believe that your good deeds must balance your bad deeds. If you were to uh, follow the life of somebody that was um, inducted through one of the Illuminati orders, like the Order of the Skull and Bones, you'll see that they are tapped as a candidate for first year or night, and a patriarch may, and may rise to leadership within the Skull and Bones. From there, you'll see that they progress to the Council of Foreign Relations, whose equivalent is the Royal Institute of International Affairs, then to the round table groups, and then to the Pilgrim Society. The Pilgrim Society is far more powerful than Council of Foreign Relations, although very few people know about it and talk about it. <coughs> and now we're going to uh, discuss very briefly with you. I can get my pen. Point. 
we're going to discuss very briefly with you the uh, basic policy process within the United States. Of course, as you can see, it's not what the people think it is. We're going to go through this very quickly. This is worthy of maybe a few books. Here at the top, on the international level, on the top satanic levels, decisions are being made. Those decisions are being passed down to <clears throat> the national level. If you go back in the occult world, you'll read uh, a man named Plato, and he talks about the wise men ruling. That occult concept was passed on down, and you'll read in Francis Bacon's book, The New Atlantis, which originally had a title with the words, uh, a word of Rosicrucian, that they wanted to create a group of wise men to rule in the new world, and that concept has indeed been implemented. <coughs> that study group or wise men group is called Majesty 12, and it's been given a lot of code names. They just sometimes just seem to happen to meet each other. And originally it was set up six men from the executive committee of the Jason Society, six men of the executive committee of the Jason Group, and six men of other key positions along with the chairman. And I believe in Reagan's administration, they upped the number to 40. And this group, on their classified paper, papers has the word magic, M-A-J-I-C, stamped on it. But they can't make all the decisions. So they pass some of the decisions on to the policy planning groups, which I've listed over here, the Council of Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the Brookings Institute, the Business Roundtable, the American Enterprise Institute, the Population Council, Resources for the Future, and the Urban Institute. But those people can't make all the decisions, so they pass them on down the line, some of them on down the line, to the research policy planning groups, such as the RAND Corporation, the Stanford Research Institute, and the Hudson Institute. Now, how does this work in actuality? Let's say the Illuminati have made a decision as to something they want to implement. They'll get somebody, say the president, to announce, we have a problem. Then they, the president will say, we have a problem, we need to initiate a government study of this problem. And then they will pour millions of dollars into a government study and maybe after 10 years come up with a large number of findings that are pr printed in these thick books that even researchers like myself don't wade through. And the bottom line is the decision that they had decided upon long ago. And then they get their opinion makers, government councils, national uh, uh, news medias and intelligence agencies to help them out to make it appear like there's grassroots support at different levels and so the legislators say we had this problem we did this study this is the best advice and they pass a law now if they have any problems along the way they had their covert enforcers like the mafia and the IRS and FBI and ADL to smooth out the opposition <coughs> Hidden behind the scenes, the Illuminati have created occult area boards in all the areas. Of course, you got your four regions with 13 states each, and then within each of those, you've got a small section that's uh, given an occult area board. All your different groups working within a given area, if they're working, collaborating with the Illuminati, will send participants or representatives. So as an example of how this works, your own cult in Japan, the Illuminati uh, area board over there uh, decided, let's build up the own cult. They pull recruit, or they pull people from other cults into the own, own cult to build it up. <coughs> then when they wanted to make regional government for the United States, what pattern did they follow? their area boards <clears throat> is a twilight world of the interconnections between organized crime and the Illuminati. As you'll notice, some of the Mishpuka and the Triad and the Mafia and the P2 Freemason families are, are tied in blood-wise, family-wise with the Illuminati. But the whole thing is one slimy mess that interconnects. <clears throat> 